Hello my loves and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If you're meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. There is a lot of information that we need to talk about, a lot of energies that are going to be impacting us this week. The first that are standing out to me are the fact that we have five planets that are currently retrograde. If you know anything about retrograde planets, they force us to slow down, to take notes, to adjust, to pivot as necessary. The majority of you are most likely feeling this energy already. Retrogrades, although they encourage us to slow down, although they encourage us to pause, to reflect, and to pivot, they're not negative. That not negative if we know how to work with the energy. And one thing that I love to talk about here with you is how to work with the energy of the planet so you can make them work for you and not against you. So go ahead and grab some coffee, some tea, some water, whatever it is that you're drinking. I've got some lemon water here on my left. I've got the chart pulled up on my left, my notes on the right. I've got tarot decks and oracle cards. We're gonna be shuffling and diving into all of the energies, everything that is that you can expect from an astrological perspective as well as an intuitive perspective. So get cozy, let's waste no further time, and let's go ahead and dive right in. So as I mentioned in the very beginning, we are going to be using the tarot as well as the astrology charts to dive into the energy of this week. The tarot deck that I'm going to be working with the most is going to be linked down below if that's something that you think that you want to work with. I've already blessed this deck and set intention that it be for everyone's highest and greatest good. So there is that. I also have the astrology chart pulled up on my left. So like I said in the very beginning, we have these five planets that are currently retrograde. The one that's going to be standing out, out to you the most is Mercury. Mercury rules communication and is currently retracing its steps back through the sign of Virgo. Now, I love Virgo energy, partly because I'm triple Virgo myself, but it can get a little frazzled and chaotic if you find yourself needing to push forward or wanting to push forward through with this week, with your plans, with goals, with communication. Also, there has been a lot of karmic lessons as of late, not just from this year, but the years before. And for some of you guys, you have been recounting and revisiting past cycles, especially with trauma, childhood, past expectations, obligations. And for so many of us, we are redefining our roles here in society, in our life. Our purpose hasn't changed in the way that it is totally different from the path that we are once walking on. There's just new discoveries that are that you are uncovering about yourself in this season in your life. With that being said, it can be very, very uncomfortable. What this can look like is the way that you have identified at, for yourself, through your work, through your relationships, through how you show up for society, that may pivot change greatly now. This could be wonderful because it's opening up the door for new potential, new opportunity. For example, so many of you guys are reporting back to me talking about how work or if you were in like a certain job or a certain industry, you find that that industry does not serve you any longer. It's not that you are bored. You just feel a sense of fulfillment in that industry and you find yourself needing to explore and pivot and try new things to take a break or to completely separate yourself from the work that it is that you were once doing even if at the time it felt sig significant and meaningful for you you may find yourself traveling living off of your savings you may find yourself taking on different jobs, and each of those jobs represent and reflect to you a new interest that you are now discovering and developing within yourself. Another thing that I've been hearing a lot of through the emails and the comments is how our relationships have changed and evolved. This is so wonderful because it's reflecting to me what it is that I've been seeing and what I've been coaching so many of you guys through, through our time together every week, which is breaking these toxic patterns when it comes to our relationships, 
who it is that we are choosing. Many of you are becoming more particular, not that you weren't particular before, but you're more aware of who and what you have been spending your time, your energy, your resources, and your attention on. Through this journey of setting intention through manifesting these type of relationships, relationships that you, I don't want to say that you think this is what it is that you want, but it is teaching you something in the moment about yourself and why you wanted this type of person in the first place, or why you said yes to this person, why you allowed this type of energy in. Just because these relationships that are entering into your life seem to be temporary, it doesn't take away from their value and the significance of what they contribute in your life in that season within your life. It does come with a feeling of being um, disappointed or disillusioned or feeling deceived in some way. This is definitely because Neptune currently transiting through Pisces and Saturn transiting through Pisces, both of these planets now retrograde, are reflecting back to us our subconscious wishes, desires, and things that it is that we find ourselves attracted to from an idealistic perspective that may not necessarily be conducive to healthy relationships and a healthy self for long term. It's very important that you explore those relationships and what it is bringing out from within you, even if it may be temporary. Now, I wanna talk to you guys about this idea of things being temporary your relationships or the dynamic between your relationships. This doesn't mean that your relationships or these circumstances that they are going to dissipate or disappear. There is this lasting energy that is showing up in the astrology chart that is evolving your connections the way that is that you see them now. There's something here that does seem like it will linger and last for the long haul, but there's aspects within you that are changing and evolving and just simply will not be the same ever again. Part of this has a lot to do with Pluto retrograde and just Pluto in general, Saturn retrograde, Saturn through Pisces, Neptune retrograde, Neptune and Pisces, these planets right now are showing you how much you have evolved or how much you are currently evolving so that, that that current relationship, that this current situation, it doesn't need to disappear forever. It doesn't need to be tossed out once the lesson has been learned. But the part of you that is dysfunctional, the part of you that has to grow past like a certain limitation or a certain expectation or to start to employ certain boundaries that that part of you sticks and is with you for the long haul. That's the blessing that these retrogrades bring. It doesn't mean that that relationship, that situation, the career is going to change, dissolve and melt away like sand on the beach when a wave comes in and takes it out. It's teaching you how to grow something that is lasting. So the part of you, again, that doesn't serve, doesn't continue to show show up, to resurface and to rear its ugly head again and again and again. So with this, I do wanna say that if you are finding yourself in this period of transition and major life lessons, especially when it comes to relationships, that there is a promise here to remain optimistic and positive about the future and what these lessons are currently bringing into your life because the the growth that it is that you are undergoing right now is a is like a promise for for what is to come or for longevity which ultimately so much of that is what what we are seeking right now let me give you an example to kind of make this make more sense. Let's say you find yourself attracted to 
someone who has a lot of depth, there's chemistry, there's a spiritual bond, there's mag like magnetic, like, like magnets between the two of you. There's this effortless, easy sparks and chemistry. However, that person is undergoing major transition and transformation within their lives. Things that they have not brought on from themselves, like they didn't do it to themselves. It is a, a sign of the times and a, a sign of all this crazy change and surprises and unexpected pivots that are shaking them down in their life. It ends up impacting you. It ends up impacting your relationship. And although the chemistry is there and although the sparks are there, it just feels like there's all of these circumstances around you that challenge the connection, that challenge you to grow, that challenge that person to grow. Now, through that, both people have the opportunity to take this time to reflect, to look back on past patterns. How do you handle those difficult times? How do you handle communication? How do you handle problems? And then see how in the past, how did you handle those things? Was it problematic? Was it constructive? Is there something that you learned now that you know better, you do better, and now you incorporate that into the relationship now, both of you guys do, so that you are growing together. Now, this is not going to be a sure, tried and true thing for everyone because at the end of the day, energy needs to align. We should not be forcing anything. If there's one thing that the astrology charts are teaching us is that there is nothing that should be forced. And the best thing that we can do is surrender the outcome to the divine, to surrender the outcome to the universe and trust that what sticks is what is meant to stick and what goes is what's meant to go. With that, there will be moments where a person, a career, a situation, a circumstance will go in a different direction from you. And it's in your best interest. And it's wonderful to challenge yourself to trust that change, to trust that pivot and allow the different directions to, to, to fork, right? To go in whatever way that they feel that they're called to do. This is giving you the freedom to grow, to stretch into this new territory, into this new chapter, into this new you, into this new person. However, at the same time, watch what comes up for you because it can bring you back to issues of self-worth. It can bring you back to issues from childhood. It can bring you back to, well, what did I do and how can I make them or how can I make this situation stick how can I make them choose me especially because at the time of us filming and talking today the sun is transiting through the sign of Leo which always focuses on our self-worth creativity and even how we inhibit ourselves through limiting beliefs through ways that is not you know not construct not constructive to our inner growth well it is constructive to our inner growth but it's teaching us about what we need to learn through and it's important for us to face it to see it that's what the energy of the sun brings is the ability to look to examine to see to face it instead of turning our face back to the shadows and pretend like it doesn't exist or to look only in that direction to not try to evolve it to not try and make it better but to say okay you know, kind of going back to those past patterns that we are being told to live and grow through right now. For a lot of you guys, there's this emphasis on independence and redefining your roles or redefining how you show up. How you show up is going to be different for anything. It could be through parenthood. It could be through your career. It could be to the community. It could be to social media. It's the way that you have religiously or routinely shown up in the past, you're kind of reflecting now and saying that is no longer who I am. It was it was authentic back in the day for whatever reason and reflected me and my goals and who I am and my expectations. But now who I am today has changed so much. What is important to me, my values have shifted and changed, changed so much that there's this new routine that it is that I'm employing. There's these new rituals and regimen that it is that I'm employing because I am a new person. So big part of that has a lot to do with Uranus's transit through Taurus, changing our, our values and changing and shifting what has been the most important to us. 
okay? So let's go ahead and dive into the tarot a little deeper. It's going to allow us to take this astrology reading into uh, a different realm. Like I said, the tarot cards that I am working with will be linked down below in the description box as well as I'm going to put the screen up so that you can watch me as I'm flipping the cards. You guys know that technology technology is not my strong front. So I'm very excited to try something different, but definitely I'm going to be working out the kinks as much as I can later on. So I'm hoping that this goes seamless. So for that reason, give me a thumbs up of this video or let me know down in the comments if you guys do appreciate this new way of um, doing readings and sharing so that you guys can see what it is that I'm seeing as I'm shuffling and pulling cards. I'm also terrible with um, emails. I'm, I'm excellent with communication face to face, but when it comes to technology, you know, through that way, it is tough for me. So hopefully you're able to see the cards that it is that I have pulled out so far. For us, we have the Queen of Swords clarified with a two of, two, two of Swords reversed. We have the Five of Wands reversed clarified by the Eight of Pentacles reversed. We have the Hermit card clarified by the King of Wands reversed. Two of Pentacles clarified by the Resurrection card or Judgment card reversed. And then we have the Eight of Swords clarified by the Eight of Pentacles. So first things first, what is coming through to me is the symbolism of the Queen of Swords clarified by the Two of Swords reversed. The word that comes through always when I'm working with the Queen of Swords typically is the word discernment. That is just a constant theme when, it, when I'm working with the Queen of Swords. She is very analytical, processing, analyzing, and wants to separate herself from her emotions and lean into her logic and into her understanding so that she can assess what she wants to attract, what she is open to receiving, what she is that like in the midst of, right? When we have the two of swords reversed, this is where we once were receiving a blockage with something and now there tends to be like an open door. I'm wondering if this has a lot to do with communication this week for the collective. You may need to be very aware of what someone is saying to you or there's information that you may be analyzing or processing. Um, I, the words that I just heard just now are due diligence. This may be for communication dealing with a friend that or a relationship or something that comes back up from the past. For others of you guys, this has a lot to do with buckling down, looking at your notes, looking at like your agenda and kind of making a to-do list of important things that you need to address, you need to take care of. This could be any type of adjustments. It's like something that feels serious. So I'm seeing like insurance, I'm seeing finances, I'm seeing bank statements, things that represent like adult, adulting, like adulthood. So this may be something that you have been dealing with are going to be dealing with this week. Also keep a, keep in mind that on the 16th, Mars ruling our drive, our ambition, currently transiting through Gemini is very active and is processing a lot of information or emails or letters, documentation, those types of things are getting filed and taken care of. It will look to be a little frustrating around the days of the 16th where it feels like you might be butting, like bumping your head up against like a brick wall or it feels like it's overwhelming. It feels like frustrating. It feels agitating to you. So just keep that energy in mind. The way to work with this energy is to be patient. The way to work with this energy is to be honest. The way to work with this energy is to be open to asking for help and looking for support instead of giving up, procrastinating, and not addressing this energy um, at all. There's a need to kind of 
look to others to support you, to encourage you, to help make plans. There's a lot of teamwork that I'm seeing as I'm looking at the charts as well as as I'm looking at the cards and intuitively what it is that I'm feeling. For some of you guys, this is going to be a huge challenge for, for you normally, but Mercury is going to be entering into the sign of Leo. Even retrograde, Mercury is going to be entering into the sign. It's, it's retracing its steps and entering back into the sign of Leo. I believe this is at the start of the week. I'm pretty sure this is at the very start of this week. This is going to give you, it's going to infuse, I don't say confidence, but um, like this need like courage like a little bit of courage for you to be bold and to ask directly for what it is that you want and need also it gives others a boost of luck or boost of courage to come up to you and to approach you so don't be surprised if you hear from someone or see someone that kind of approaches you that you would never have expected, but you appreciate it, you're open to it. I'm also seeing someone here exploring different opportunities, or this could be a reflection of opportunities from the past, recycling or resurfacing right now. Some things feel like once they've come and gone, it's over right like there's like a chance for you to choose do you reach back to those old connects do you reach back to that old person and try to like breathe life into that connection or breathe life into what was again there's that um it feels like a question mark it feels like flipping a coin and for those of you guys you're looking back at past relationships and connections and or business like opportunities and you're taking it as a lesson you're looking at the gift of what that opportunity was but where like what now moving forward into the future how would you handle this differently also reflect back on your own growth there is something else here to be addressed to look at and it has to do with comparison you know that they say comparison is a thief of joy this is where we look at what others are doing and we take it upon ourselves to be like, well, why aren't, why am I not doing it that way? Why don't I have what they have? This is something that we don't, I'm seeing this within the cards. I'm also seeing it within the astrology chart. We don't need to continue to have that mindset anymore. Every single one of us, I know we know this, but sometimes you could be the messenger and be the one to say it all the time, but you're the one who needs to hear it again. Every single one of us has our own journey. We have our own timeline, Timeline. we have our own growth. We have opportunities and what we do with them in the moment reflects what was important to us at that time. For that reason, remember that you have grown, that you have evolved, that you have shifted and you can't always get exactly what is that you've had in the past back now in the future in the present or in the future but you can reflect back and say to yourself this is what I was going through at that time I give myself grace because now I'm different now I'm not in the same place I'm not even the same person for so many of us you have shed the skin of yourself so completely that the people that were in your life in the past don't even know there's no way that they can know who you are today because you have changed you have evolved so greatly that who you were then is not who you are now so with that there's this need to kind of reflect and redefine yourself to not compare yourself to others to not compare yourself to your past self but to see yourself for who you are now and begin to speak life and confidence and courage and Begin to talk to the universe. I'm very spiritual, as you guys know. And maybe you are too, especially if you're someone who is watching, you know, and hanging out with me here on Bahati Life YouTube channel. Um, going to your altar, going into your sacred space, going into your prayer closet, and talking to the, di talking to the divine, talking to the higher powers, and asking them, help me to understand who I am to my core now. Who am I? What is my purpose? Also, there's this message about communication is what it is that I'm hearing and feeling and sensing that the way that you communicate, the way that you express yourself reflects that it start to reflect even deeper your intention, that it reflect your vibration, that it reflect your aura, that it reflects 
your will so that other people and the world can kind of sense, not just intuitively, but hear and see and feel where it is that you're coming from and vibe with you. This is going to open up more doors. Ask your angels, your guides, your ancestors, the, the divine for opportunity. Ask your angels and your guides for discernment as well as um, blessings, protection. A lot of protection today. I know that we've been talking about that a lot. When we have the planets right now, the major planets, all of them retrograde, changing and pivoting and shifting. When we have Uranus and Taurus, Taurus rules the earth. Taurus rules our, found, our foundation, like our comfort zones and our values being having like little grenades kind of throwing at it it disrupts our feeling of safety and security even though it's for the better even though it's changing society the world and connection as we know it and even technology as we know it it can really shake us to our core that's one of the reasons why and i'll talk about this a little further in my announcements later on at the end of this video the protection oil I opened up for the protection oil to be shared with you guys once again um, because it's good to armor ourselves it's good to set intention it's good to call in protection for us even as we are you know in the midst of all this energy it's really good to protect yourself so whether you're working with an oil whether you're you know setting intention writing it down manifesting protection for yourself talk to your angels and your guides and asking ask them for the ability to speak life and to make you courageous and to also help you with your strengths and for the ways that you are weak and the ways that you could use a little extra help ask for that help to to showcase itself or where you need to go who is it that is going to be the best person for you that can help you with what it is that you want and need for yourself at this season in your life especially when it comes to business education plans physical goals let's say you're working on your fitness and your health is there a personal trainer or a diet or a nutritionist that can help you hit those goals when it comes to your health and vitality so these are things that you can look out for okay the other thing too is it's just so interesting this feeling that it is that I keep getting about releasing the past and not allowing the past decisions or past relationships as you reflect on them to hold you back or to take away to steal your courage now or to even steal your bravery think about how far you have come think about like when you really sit down and you reflect on the journey none of us are perfect we are all growing we're doing the best that we can for the most part and when we make mistakes which are inevitable it can change it can make us it can make the path kind of change a little bit it can make the road a little turbulent or rocky one thing that I want you to look at is Two of Pentacles and the Judgment card reversed is to allow the past to simply be in the past. If you cannot or if you have not been able to make peace with the past yet, there's a wonderful opportunity for you to do so now. You don't have to wait for a new moon or a full moon in order to set intention or to release the past or to do any type of road opening for yourself in the near future that's something that i would do you can write in your journal you can get it out and begin to um forgive yourself or ask for a separation between you and that which was um this is just going to be so good for your peace of mind, but also collectively, we all benefit from a lifting in our vibration of not having to hold on and harbor resentment or a feeling of guilt or remorse from the decisions that you have made in the past. Again, you're human. You're not perfect. You're not going to get it right all the time. Go ahead and allow yourself to release that which was so that you can feel more courageous and empowered now. For others of you, I'm seeing you dealing with anxiety or sleepless nights or these changes that are happening within your body, especially when it comes to energy, energy work, like energy, like you could be picking up on the collective. This is something that I'm seeing like going for walks. I know that sounds so cliche and so traditional and so obvious. But going for walks, yoga, meditation, energy work, healing of your your energetic body is so good for you. Even going, taking a bath, going to the ocean, going to the river, 
in helping to cleanse yourself of energy that is building up here. For some of you guys, it could be something as wonderful as like feng shui, decluttering, readjusting your house, like your house or your home or your room or your space, clearing out your book bag, clearing out your wallet. There's been so much declutterization that has been showing up lately. We've been talking about it for the last few months and so many of you have been reporting that you are decluttering. As you are decluttering, you don't even realize that you're making space for the new, that something new is on the horizon for you and what does it look like? It looks like opportunity. This is something that is going to look different for everybody. Remember, these are very specific readings for a general audience, so I'm not pulling right now your your specific chart we're all different like we all have different placements within our natal chart no chart is the same even twins so we're all kind of dealing with different energies at the same time although um like where these energies fall within our lives change and shift we're all still kind of under that same umbrella so it impacts us all different so with this um I just want to remind you guys to give yourself a whole lot of grace right now. Allow yourself to feel the highs and the lows of where we're at right now in this time. Know that it's normal. For so many of you guys, you're like me, just super connected to the moon and super connected to the earth or fire or air or water, one of the elements, our spirit. And with that, we have to remind ourselves that it's very natural for us to change and to evolve and to shift as needed. And that's exactly what it is that you're doing. Nothing, nothing is going to be forever. Um, when it comes to communication, I do see you guys um, this week focusing on standing in your truth. I see you being bold. I see you speaking out unapologetically. This could be in your relationships and your connections. It could also be your prayers, your intentions get more bold, more loud, more specific. I love that for you. If this means that everything kind of changes and evolves because of it, then so be it. It was time anyway, even with the retrogrades. It's just kind of bringing you back to things that you've been holding on to that are coming out now and spilling out. But remember the Queen of Swords is here and the Two of Swords. What was once blocked off and locked off, we are now intentional, we are deliberate, we are specific, we are empowered to speak our truth and let the chips fall where they may. So that is the reading that it is that I have for this week. I am going to be diving into more specific energies for those of you guys who are subscribed to Bahati Love Notes. My um, monthly membership that is exclusive readings. Last week, I was a little under the weather. I wasn't sick or anything, but as you guys know, I'm currently pregnant and the energy was just, um, it was it was great. Like I've been feeling wonderful, way better than the first trimester. The trimester was, first trimester was brutal, honey. I needed a whole lot of grace, patience, and trust to do that entire process. One day I'll talk about it. But yeah, I've been doing well, but last week my routine kind of got a little disrupted. So for those of you guys that are subscribed to Bahati Love Notes, I'm going to be diving into these energies for this week, talking more specifically to the current condition, to, to our soul, exactly intuitively what is that we need to hear and, and feel for that group. If you are interested in Bahati Love Notes, definitely go ahead and ch check out the link below. That is, it's a wonderful membership. If you're someone who is like needs a lot of support or loves tarot, ritual, and routine, this is going to be an excellent um, an excellent service that will is offered to you. Outside of that, I'm not open to any personal readings for outside of Bahati Love Notes and those who have already booked with me. I'm making my way through them one at a time, slowly but surely. That's one of the announcements that is that I have. Um, the links for Bahati Love Notes will be linked down below, as well as a coupon code. Franklin just entered the chat, my little my little pup. Um, the other thing is Wednesday is going to be the last day that you can purchase or reserve the protection oils. More than half of them have already gone out. From the time of me fulfilling the first batch of those who reserved the protection and tension oils, um, they have already, they've already, you should be receiving them now, right? It's Monday now, so go ahead and check your mailboxes for those of you guys that are in the United States. Um, and for those that are international, they're in transit, last time I checked. From that time, there was a few more 
that orders that came in and reservations. Wednesday, I'm shutting it down Wednesday of this week and will be probably focusing now on my maternity leave. Um, for those of you guys that have pending orders, I've got my family that is helping me to wrap and pack what hasn't already been shipped out. And from there, we will be absolutely done. I'm going to be resting, and then we're going to be getting the house ready. We've got a baby shower. We have um, the nursery is pretty much all set up and situated, which has been really awesome. I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. But, um, yeah, from there, we're just, you know, in the final stretches. So um, thank you guys again for being so patient with me. For those of you guys that have been sending love, to me, I so, so, so appreciate it. So appreciate it. Oh, and one final thing. This video is sponsored by Cozy Earth. I'm going to link the coupon down below. It's a specific coupon. I think it's C as in cougar, E as in egg, Bahati Life. And that's 40% off your order for um, Cozy Earth. And yeah, so thank you guys for sponsoring this video. And until then, um, I will see you guys in the next one. Make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. I've got two major announcements that are coming forward into the future, but probably not before I give birth. But it's what we can expect in the future. It's cemented and planned, and I'm just so ready for it. Um, so keep your eyes out for that. You're definitely going to want to get your notifications on for that. Until then, you guys, I will see you in my next video. I'm sending you all of my love. And I'll talk to you later. Be blessed. Bye.